Well, greetings, Mr. Colazar's class. We're going to look into today, what I look at is our resonance and our exceptions to our Lewis dot structures. So as we're going, looking at resonance structures in our standards and relate to the Lewis dot structure, exceptions to that octet or to the rule of eight. So to begin with resonance, when all the stru when there is more than one possible structure due to the different locations of our multiple bonds. So as we're looking, the actual structure of the molecule that undergoes resonance is an average of all the possible structures. And this is generally due to our double bonds being able to move around the atom from one place to another. Now experimentally, they've shown that all the bond links are identical, so we're going to look into what that means. So our example, NO3 nitrate, remember, is a polyatomic ion. That's shown from our little minus sign there. And so nitrate, to begin with, we have one nitrogen, five outer electrons from being in group 15. So five electrons from nitrogen, oxygen, we have three. Group 16, six outer electrons. So in the end, we get 18 electrons from that. And we gain one electron from our polyatomic ion. So in the end, 24 total electrons is what we need to show. So we are start with nitrogen, the least amount, since carbon's not there, so are going to be our central atom. Skeleton structure to one, two, three oxygens. So right now we've shown a total of six electrons. So we have 18 left to show. We're going to deal those in pairs, two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen total electrons were dealt out. So we are down to no electrons left. So at this point, we want to look to see, is each atom happy? Oxygen has eight electrons around it. Eight electrons, eight electrons. Nitrogen, however, is not happy. It only has two, four, six being shared. So oxygen and nitrogen need to form a double bond. Question is, is it with this oxygen, this one, or this one? Now what we're going to say is it's actually with each one. So first off, we're going to move, and I'm just going to take a move to make a double bond. So I'm just going to take that lone pair and make it a shared pair. I'm just going to cross it out. I have an eraser with me. I'm just going to cross that out there. So now nitrogen has its eight electrons around it, making each atom happy. And in the end, putting it in brackets with a minus sign around it. Now what we're going to show with resonance is a double-headed arrow is our word for the resonance. And what it's going to do is we can redraw and show that nitrogen also could have double bonded to a different oxygen. Or we could go as far to say is that instead it could have double bonded to that, oops, right the negative sign there, or it could have double bonded to the bottom oxygen leaving the other oxygens with three lone pairs of electrons. So what actually ends up happening is the double bond actually moves back and forth between the three oxygens and the nitrogen. Now this results in kind of a little bit double bonds a little bit shorter than the rest. And it kind of results in just, I'm just going to do a dotted line saying that that double bond is temporarily in each of those places. So the result of our resonance structures are the double bond moving back and forth and back and forth and back and forth between each of these three models shows that the actual length 
of each of these bonds is very similar, is actually the same, and each of them is a little bit shorter than being a single bond or a little bit longer than being a double bond. So somewhere in between is where these end up being. So resonance, when more than one Lewis structure can be drawn. So that's just a little extra hint there, more than one Lewis structure possible. And that's because of our, remember, our double bonds moving. So that's our resonance part. Now a couple exceptions to our rules. Our exceptions to the octet rules, I want you to be able to identify these ideas. So if you see one, you should be able to identify it. Our first one is going to be radicals or free radicals is what we've called them before. So our first one, nitrog our NO2, nitrogen dioxide. We have one nitrogen, five outer electrons, times one of them. And oxygen, we have six outer electrons. There's two of them. So in the end, we've got five plus, whoops, plus 12 electrons gives us 17 total to place. So nitrogen, our center atom. Nitrogen, our center atom, oxygen. Oxygen are other two atoms bonded to the nitrogen. And right now we're showing two, four, six. Oh, we got the double bond a little bit too soon. Sorry about that. We'll see that in just a second. With each of our oxygens going to be bonded. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, and sixteen. But we need a seventeenth electron. We have one left, which is given to nitrogen. Now, that one lone electron is our free radical, or our radical. These are highly reactive. Or being unstable, they want to attract and take an electron from anybody else. And they want to take that electron. And what happens is, if they take an electron from somebody else, the next atom wants that electron back, so they're going to steal an electron from somebody else. What you need to do is be able to identify that this is a free radical, a single lone electron instead of a pair of electrons. Our second example, exception to the rule, suboctet. Sub mean below or less than our number of octets needed. So a couple elements that really fit this rule from group 2 and group 13 are beryllium fluoride and boron fluoride. What they look like, group 2 is going to want to make two covalent bonds. And group 13, a lot of times, will only make three covalent bonds instead. So beryllium fluoride is happy only with two covalent bonds instead of having its full eight electrons. So we only are showing four electrons bonded there. And our other example, boron trifluoride. Is happy with only showing three covalent bonds. So as we're going, suboctets, elements, group 2 and 13, that instead of wanting eight outer electrons, are happy with, in this case, four outer electrons or two covalent bonds. Group 13, boron, six outer electrons or three covalent bonds. Need to just be able to identify. Or if you were to see a picture of one of these, that this would be a suboctet. And our last one, expanded octet. Expanded would be more octets. An example here, SF6, we've got one sulfur, which has six outer electrons. And we have fluorine, six of them, 
Seven outer electrons, 42. Electrons, so in the end, 48 total electrons needs to be shown. Sulfur being the smallest, or least amount of elements, we need to show one, two, three, four fluorines. And then later on, you're going to see an example where we actually will darken an arrow on one side to show that one is going away from you. And kind of, this will be something we see later on, and one coming towards to make it a little more three dimensional. And so we've shown 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12 total electrons so far, leaving us with 36. And in the end, just to save some time, each fluorine is full. With its outer electrons, to count them all up would give us our 36 to get back to zero electrons. Now what we need to know, these don't start until end of period three. And we won't get into, there's some empty d orbitals that can get filled, but what I want you to be able to do is identify, if you see a molecule like this, that this is an expanded octet, where we can have more than our eight bonds towards it. So those are the exceptions uh, to our octet, and then also the resonant structure. Go Bison.